Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon. And Ju not in the park. July the 20th. Looks like that. 2013. And, um, yeah, it's Saturday, but it's not in the park because every day is not. It's too damn hot! Every day is not the 4th of July, considering. We are, we are experiencing possibly one of the longest and hottest heat waves Seven days. in recorded history for the New York metropolitan area, if not the hottest summer and heat wave consecutively. How long? Seven days above 90. Yeah, like, now, like, last night like, not, like 95 degrees, uh, not counting the heat indexed which is humidity, right? When I went on Yahoo last night, mm -hmm. it said the temperature at 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. in Hackensack was 100 degrees. And that's at 11? 11 p.m. p.m.? That's incredible. Absolutely. So that's the low. That's the low for the evening. Yeah. So you can imagine how dangerous the day, the high for the day is Hackensack is the um, is the closest major city to our county. It's the capital of Bergen County, New Jersey. For those of you, you know that was wondering. Sometimes uh, uh, famous singers uh, put it in their song. You know, like Billy Joel. He, you know, one of his songs he used the word Hackensack. But hey, hey, once in a while it comes up. Um, but anyway, yeah. We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave, but the person and who Marilyn Monroe ain't singing it. And the person who wrote the song was probably had access to an in-ground pool, central air conditioning, and I mean we have, thank God, we have. Uh, well, I can't knock on wood because the shillelaghs at home <laughs> have the deer antlers, but thank God we have very effective AC, but. There's no way we're going to be in the park on Saturday because <laughs> it's yeah, too damn it's hot. Certainly not in a pool, and we don't. And not we, a communal pool. And I do not have an in-ground pool. <laughs> you know what's in a, a communal pool? Uh, communal pools. A communal urine. pool. Yeah, and the germs, and feces. Feces. And pee pee. See, in Spanish, a swimming pool is called a piscina. Piscina. Well with a communal pool, a public pool, the word P is emphasized in piscina. Yes, but you know, people who go to the... the levity bells. People who go to the BF room for number two, and they just wipe, and then they go into a pool. The, the, the residue from their That's smelly correct. anus, from their filthy anus, dissolves into the pool and and you know chlorine or no chlorine a public uh, whirlpool you know public jacuzzi public swimming pools are a cesspool <sighs> of germs just like the average human mouth is a cesspool I don't like it if I if somebody invites me into their pool it's a pri and it's a private pool that's one thing but not public. I don't know. And of course they do it at the beach. But, you know, I mean, listen. Well, then you got your germs and rat, but the fish shit and everything listen, else too. Listen, listen. Dilution, dilution in the ocean is, is, is well and good. But if the surf keeps on rolling in and you have a, a large crowd of people pissing in the foam and it keeps on Rolling back in, rolling back in, rolling back in. Rolling my piss back in. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> anyway. How the hell do we get on that subject? Well, you know, this is completely unrehearsed broadcasting at its finest. It's unrehearsed. My authentic deer antler, which is meant, the horns are meant for tea baggers. The horns of a dilemma. The horns of dilemma. The uh, right wing. Uh, fundamentalists and conservatives and blue dog Democrats. That's what these points are meant for. The rack. The rack. Well, 
But when a girl has a nice rack, it sure doesn't mean this, right? Yeah. All right, let me formally <coughs> pipe a bore before I start my, my little monologue here. Let me formally pipe aboard my co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. I will pipe him aboard our progressive liberal starship with my authentic, from Newport, Rhode Island, bosun's whistle. <clears throat> Matey, and welcome aboard the Mega Life 21 hard hitting truth progressive talk internet talk radio station. And welcome to Progressive Discussions. This is Progressive Discussions. I am your host, James Piranha Madonna, and I am here with the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this Saturday, sir? Pretty good, pretty good, I guess. Hey, I guess that AC is working great. Oh, thank you to who? However. All right. Now, let me, yes, entertain you, but also, more importantly, inform you. All right. Now, all right, let me, let me get this, this one over with before I get into the other one, which is more lengthy. Uh, Hostess. Hostess. The, the company, Twinkies. The company that makes makes Twinkies. Yes. Makes, made, still makes. Well, Host the Twinkies are still around. I don't know if they're still by Hostess, but yeah, you know who the hell knows. Yeah. Well, I'll give you I'll give you uh, one guess. Uh, the filling is not real whipped cream. <laughs> It's, it's, it's supposedly got rocket fuel in there or it's, something. It's, it's, it's partially hydrogenated trans fats with other chemicals. Uh, Just like a Reese's peanut butter cup is not no more peanut pure butter. natural peanut butter inside. Uh, All right, let me read this. Uh, read that. Hostess, the company, was not, okay, Hostess was not, was not forced into bankruptcy by union workers. Huh. The CEO of Hostess got a raise from $750,000 per year to $2.25 million, okay, and the executives for Hostess received a staggering $1.8 million in bonuses after the bankruptcy filing took place. The same executives for Hostess admitted that money for worker retirement funds was used for company operations instead. In other words, they drove it into the ground and then they benefited from it. Hey, anybody say Wall Street? And they blamed unions. Yes, of course. They blamed the, the poor schmucks, the poor uh, working stiffs, the employees mm. for their so-called um, well, Great. they're mediocre salaries that, you know, if you talk to a CEO, everybody's overpaid to him, except him, yeah. except him. So they poor, drove it. Poor for, for performance. Now, this is one example of probably 99.9999% of, of corporate American CEOs. This is the mentality that we're dealing with. <laughs> well, it's also the re redistribution of the moolah upward. Yes. That we've been experiencing for mm. over 30 years. Yeah, pure greed, idolatry. Which is killing our economy. Love of money. Um, anything repl that replaces God is, is a form of idolatry. Well, you can't use that kind of terminology or something for people who are godless. It doesn't mean anything. Because it'll go right over their head. That's correct. Well, they're just greed, greedy, wicked people. Uh, if they, if they, if they don't believe that employees that most likely have to work harder now than in the past, if they don't believe they deserve a living wage to take to support themselves and their families. 
and to and to live a better life in America, if they don't believe that should exist, if they don't believe in a minimum wage, then what else could you call them but greedy and wicked? They believe in their having the best wages, not the people who work for them. Yeah, so it's always the people on the very top, like uh -huh. a pyramid scheme. Ah! That, that rake in the fruits uh -huh. of everybody's labor. Uh, All right. In other words, something that, going back to God, uh, is uh, God is against. He's against people benefiting from the work of others. You benefiting from, the, you know, the, the back of another person. Exploitation. Exploitation. Correct. Usury. Usury. We all usury too. Hey, hey! Can anybody say Wall Street? Oh yeah. Wall Street, all, all, all these real criminals that never seen one day inside of a jail, yeah. but, um, but if a, a poor guy uh, uh, steals a loaf of bread... Or kites a check. Yeah, or, I mean, because, he, because he's, he's broke and, and starving, if a, uh, he'll see the inside of a... He'll, he or she will see the inside of a jail cell, yeah. but not the real crooks. Of course, that is a, uh, that is a, uh, speaking of the Bible again, that is one thing in the Bible, you, you must not, uh, you must not hold responsible a person who steals bread because he's hungry. That's true. And you're supposed to, uh, Well, you're supposed to feed him in the first place. And, and you So not, you won't have to do that. And you're supposed to forgive, uh, loans to the poor after a certain Well, you're period. not supposed to have any interest on them. Well, we're talking about God's economics. Yeah, versus capitalism. Right. Yeah. Which happens to be the uh, the uh, the title of the new God Project. Yeah. In the new newsletter. In the new newsletter, uh, um, God's economics versus capitalism. Now, I want to get into um, you know since the whole thing about capitalism and corporatism and corporate CEOs never changes; it just gets worse. You know. Um, uh, oh, there was a, uh, I posted something um, concerning Monsanto. It, it, the first time I ever seen the ugly, evil, bald-headed mug of the uh, Monsanto CEO. What's his name? Hugh Grant or something? Hugh Grant, no. No, it's uh, something, that I, I could be wrong. Anyway, I posted it on Holistic Health Talk and a statement that was made from the CEO of Monsanto was that uh, his goal, his objective, is for all of food on the planet to be controlled and de and developed by Monsanto. Uh, so this nice guy, goal, huh? so this dude wants to conquer the world. Well, what's different than that? You than think about it, Hitler's you. goal of world domination. More or less the same. Oh. Because doesn't genetically modified foods uh, uh, end up with a slow genocide? Yes, Eventually. they are finding out that uh, they cause many problems. Not only in laboratory animals, but in humans. Yeah, no. In humans too, yes. But of course Monsanto and our government cover this stuff up. You know, uh, just to change the subject for a moment. Yeah. This new woman who's coming on to uh, take Barbara Walters' place on The View, Jenny McCarthy. Oh, yeah, I remember her. Well, she uh, she tells it like it is as far as uh, autism being a cause of vaccines. Is she progressive? And there be, oh, everybody's putting her down and everything, even Time Magazine. Like she's out of, good she's for, nuts or oh, something good for bringing her. that up. Good for her. It happened to her kid. Good for her. You know, it's a personal thing. Hey, even Dr. Oz promotes uh, vaccines, but his kids never got a vaccine. <laughs> right? That's what I heard. His kids never got a vaccine. Good for her, Jenny McCarthy. Yeah. All right. You know, I'm, I'm glad to see that big mouth Hassel, Hassel Fox, Hasselbeck. With Hasselbeck. She moved to Fox News. That yeah. figures. <laughs> they, they, they welcomed her with open arms. That, that, that Medusa, that Is harpy. Is she going like, to take the place of Palin or something? You know? 
Just because they both make as little sense as possible. Yeah. Well, there, there's these are these are the uh, this is the conservative coven of witches. These are are wicked women who have very little or no compassion. And Hasselbeck has got a big mouth. She's a selfish bitch, in my opinion, and uh, just like the others, part of the conservative coven of witches. Now, the sickening sycophants, part three. Sickening sycophants. For those of you that uh, do not have mastery of the Engl English language, a sycophant is somebody who curries favor, a, a brown noser, Fawns. an ass kisser. Ass kisser. Okay, polishing. And it's, the, it's, it's not some sort of elephant. No. No, sycophant. It's not. It's no. not a. It's not a, a elephant that uh, <laughs> needs to see the veterinarian. Sycophant, a an apple polisher, if you want to put it nicely, brown noser, of different sorts for different reasons. I like ass kisser. Yes. Yeah. You know? Well, the reason why I use sycophant is it, it, it rhymes with sickening. Yeah. Well, it is sickening. Sick, sickening sycophants. Well, this has to do with some of our own kind. Myself and uh, Dr. Bill were progressive liberals, mm -hmm. uh, but we 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 like to stick to facts and to the truth. Sometimes I side. Once in a big while, I side with the right wing, oh. and I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you why at the end. But there are those that are liberals that are panderers. Pandering liberals meaning they um, they desperately want to be liked or loved by everyone. They do not want to be labeled as mean-spirited or or bigoted in any way. They pander to every <laughs> lobbying group except the corporate elitists, which is, thank God they don't do that, because then, then they wouldn't be progressive liberal. But, you know, as far as uh, <clears throat> minorities, gender, people of color, they usually believe in affirmative action and racial quotas and gender quotas. They usually support uh, all this, all this, uh, all this, all these silly um, uh, overreaction um, nonsense with the sexual harassment lawsuits. You know, where a man can't even ask a woman out on a date that it, that's that works in her in the same company that he works in. You know, well, it depends. It's it depends ridiculous. on whether he has power over her. No, what what, what equal, about two people who are attracted to one another? Yeah, and they work on the floor. And they work fine. on the floor. That's fine. Then if he asks her out, chances are she won't report him right. as, as sexual. But if she doesn't but like if the, him, if the guy has power over her and she refuses him, you mean he can come back and you know black harm man. her in some way? You mean blackmail, extortion, whatever. Oh, well, that's wrong. That's the problem. It's inappropriate yeah. for a, a male supervisor. It's a power thing. To you to abuse his power over a female subordinate and to try to extort sexual favors. Sexual favors. For for to keep her job. Of that's course, what that's what Mr. Bill O'Reilly tried to do. Mr. Lupa really? himself. Mr. Lupus, yeah, he settled the damn thing for a couple of million or whatever the hell it was. Oh, but he's a... Uh, oh, he's Mr. Upright Conservative. Oh, yeah, yeah, Straight-laced. Yeah. Straight-laced, baby. Uh, it never they, happens. It never happens. These are people that talk to God, too. These yeah. conservatives, right? So what I'm, what I'm saying is to, to have fairness and equality it, it, it just doesn't make sense to give special treatment to any one group. It, it, that doesn't sound like equality and fairness. I, I sure as hell don't want to take a step down because of my race. You know, I, I want to get ahead based on my merits and my qualifications or talent. I don't want now, to. I, I refuse things, to step down to so let a woman take my position. What if those things are not respected? Or or black? Huh? Or counted? What? Talent and merit, and it's it should be, but it's not. All your all, all your politicians, when they get out of uh, uh, politics, where do they go? They go to some stupid uh, corporation or something. For what? Because they know so much, they have merit. No, because of who they know. 
because they can get some stuff for the corporation. That's called a, a form of cronyism. Isn't cronyism. It? That's uh. There's no merit stuff in America. That's bullshit. It's office politics. If there were merit stuff, you wouldn't have te you wouldn't have Tesla buried. You wouldn't have Wilhelm Reich buried. If it was, you a wouldn't have any of that. If it was stuff. a fair world. Exactly. Exactly. Nikolai Tesla, who refused to sell out to people like J.P. Morgan, like Thomas Edison did. In other and, words, and, to play the game. Right. In other words, Tesla believed that the world could be supplied with free electricity that is all around us without charging people. And that's not what J.P. Morgan wanted. So and Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison wanted to sell everything, sell his electricity, and that's why they went with Edison, and Tesla died poor. Yeah. That's why we don't have electric trolleys anymore in cities and etc. because of Standard Oil, because they wanted to sell oil, so they wanted to use buses. And pollute, and the, cars, and pollute the atmosphere. And pollute the atmosphere. Well, that they don't even think of. That doesn't even so, in it. other words, the electric trolley never became obsolete. No, as far as I know, it's still working up in San Francisco and Wilkes-Barre, PA. It, it works quite well in San Francisco and Wilkes-Barre, yeah. Pennsylvania. Wilkes-Barre, PA, it used to run up there. Used I don't to be. Know, they used to have them in, in Brooklyn. That's mm -hmm. why. That's how they got the word the Brooklyn Dodgers from. They, they, they was originally Kept dodging the, the, the. No, it was originally called the Brooklyn Trolley Dodgers. Oh my God! Who invented that word, the phrase? That's disgusting. Trolley Dodgers. No wonder they changed it. Trolley Dodgers. I had a I had a discussion with uh, William H. Morrill the Third about the fact that um, not not many professional sports teams are named after insects, except for you know the Charlotte Hornets, you know the Hornet, you know the basketball team, NBA. But as far as uh, That's like just varsity, though, right? Yeah, but there's no like uh, mosquitoes or gnats. No, they usually go for a you know tough animal or yeah. something of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. The Nittany Lions. Yeah, there's lions, there's tigers, there's uh, tiger, the Braves. Well, the Indian, yeah, the Cle well, the Cleveland Indians. But what's the what's some of the other one? The uh, the Rams. The Rams, yeah, yeah. I know. The Chargers with the, the, Chargers. With the electric bolt, yeah. the lightning bolt. But anyway, um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of, there has been a lot of pandering, and uh, I just want to, listen, any profiling against anybody's gender or race or whether or not, or if they're handicapped and extremely qualified and somebody's prejudiced against their dis disability. I mean, of course this is all wrong, but what Dr. Bill was trying to say was companies were refusing to hire certain individuals for decades. And that's why they came about with the affirmative action yes. law. But at the same time, affirmative action is a form of reverse racism with gender quotas and racial quotas and things of that nature. Uh, so it's complex. It's very complicated to try to create and maintain. Wouldn't it be complicated if it would? People would just be fair. A fair world. Correct. You know, it's hard to maintain yeah. to to provide and maintain. Uh, a fair world, like uh, um, New York City Police Commissioner, uh, what's his name? Ray Raymond Kelly. Raymond Kelly, uh, who may become Homeland, Homeland Security. Who may become the head of Homeland Securities? Uh, President Obama is seriously considering him. Uh, Ray Kelly believes in in uh, f stop and frisk. Stop and frisk. Yes. Stop and frisk. It's worked well, he says. So that stop and frisk law in, in New York means that you can profile based, Correct, on, based on appearance. What happens is they use another word. Oh, really? It's the same thing, but they use another word you instead mean, of profile. They don't use profile. That's great. Republicans do that a lot, you know, with their clear skies amendment, which outcome. gives polluters, you know, the chance to do anything they want. 
That's but like, they name it the clear skies. Man. That's like calling a fat, obese, tall person tiny. Or, yes. or, or calling a basketball player shorty. 40. The clear skies amendment. That's it. It's the opposite of what Republicans That's do. That's correct. That's correct. They believe that the, the world, the oceans, the atmosphere dilutes all this pollution. Yes, well, as Rush Limbaugh would say, he doesn't believe that man can cause those kinds of problems. Really? Yes. So he, where does he think uh, global warming uh, he doesn't believe came from? In it. You see... Well, how do you account for climate... You don't have to account for anything the, if you have an ideology. The poles are melting, I know, which but is an pro ideology, proven, and, and the climate in the planet Earth has, is changing. An ideology prevents people from seeking the truth. They're blinded. They're deceived. Revelation 12, 9. The whole world is deceived. Right. But what happens is, uh, ideology gives people a, a quick answer to problems and everything so that they don't have to go and do homework. It's they're, they're lazy. Oh, yeah, they don't know the Bible. Yeah, in that instance, the context, in, in, re yes, in reality, about they, the Bible, yes, they don't know it. But they'll bring you scriptures and stuff of this nature, you know, that uh, uh, has no meaning at all, but it seems to mm -hmm. to uh, 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 go along with their idea for somehow, mm -hmm. some way. Yeah. Well, I want to continue. It has nothing to do with it. I want to continue with Don't say no. People in today's society are, they seem to be af afraid of saying no to anyone. Uh, modern day parents are afraid to say no to their children. Society, the government is afraid to say no to a specific uh, group, you know, racial group or, or a gender. It's like. Uh, or a corporation. Or a corp. Then again, they're afraid to say no to a corporation. Well, we know why. <laughs> they, they contribute towards their campaign. Yeah. <laughs> but people are afraid to say a magical two capital letters. No, and this is part of the problem. And uh, by the way, since the Zimmerman case, ah. there has been eight burglaries in Zimmerman's uh, gated uh, community down there in uh, what is it, Sanford, Florida? Sanford, Florida. Yeah, eight burglaries. So, so that is why I am, I am uh, a jumping fence and siding with the right wingers, and oh, and geez. I believe in old-fashioned self-defense and justice because eight burglaries in one gated community is quite excessive dr bill so uh maybe there's a reason for the whiteies to be a little trigger happy down there i mean how wrong